All right, so to close this section out, we're going to do a little bit of math. The math is back very briefly. So, molar mass conversions. Well, what are we doing? Well, essentially we're just using molar mass to convert between grams and moles. That's all we're doing. What are the units of molar mass? Grams per mole. So, it sort of bridges how much something, you know, has a mass versus how many there are. What is the molar mass of something? Well, as we talked about last video, depends on what it is. But, you know, we'll just kind of, we'll just get right into it, you know. So if we ask something like, uh, you know, how many moles of, um, hmm, what can we have? Uh, HCl gas. We'll say are needed. Don't ever make stuff up on the fly with Sharpies. If you ever do my job, don't do it like me. Be better. Be better than me. So how many moles of HCl gas? Whoa! Who puts two S's in gas? Here I am over here. You guys are all looking over there still. How many moles of HCl gas are needed um, to have, we'll say, 50.0 grams of HCl? Okay, and this isn't like a trick question. Gases still have mass, okay? Like, you're like, oh, it's going to, well, no. It's, plus, this stuff doesn't float. It sinks. And it's yellow. If you ever see, this is some great life advice. If you take anything away from my chemistry class. So there, uh, I'll preface it by saying there are gases that are clear and color colorless, and they will kill you. Those exist. But if you ever see a big cloud, brown, yellow, green, anything like that, coming at you, run. That's a... That's probably a gas that's going to wipe you out, but it's kind enough to, to let you know, all right? So, you know, it's not it's not hiding. It's not like the, I don't know, the alien from Alien. It's like, I don't know, Jason from, what is that, the Friday the 13th movies? They always see the guy, like he's not hiding. So it's coming at you. It wants you to know, and it's moving slowly, and it's going to get you unless you run. So, you know, just watch out for a twig that you might trip on or whatever it might be. Gotta have the cat jump scare in there too. All that stuff. All the good horror movie tropes. So, here's our question. Here I was like, we're gonna dive right in and I get immediately sidetracked with nonsense. And yeah, this stuff happens when I teach a class live and I'm around other people during the day. So, you're, you're basically getting the same thing. Just instead of a whiteboard, you're getting yellow paper. So I always like to start these problems out, as I mentioned in section one, with what I know. So right off the bat, I know I have 50.0 grams of HCl. Now one thing I'll add to what I was saying a second ago is, you have the power to fast forward, pause, whatever, so it's on you. Uh, I don't have the cue of seeing everyone roll their eyes to know it's time to move on. So what else do we need? Well, we need something here, <laughs> probably, right? And then we want to end with, uh, we want to end with moles. We don't know how many moles of HCl there are. So let's start filling in the blanks. So what do we need here? Well, we're going to need the molar mass to convert somehow. So what do we know about the molar mass of HCl? Well, we know there's an H. So 1.01 .01 grams per mole for one hydrogen. And we've got a chlorine. And that is 35.45 grams per mole. Okay, we add it up and we get 36.46 grams per mole. So that is going to be what we use here. But remember, it's a conversion factor. So we've got to ask ourselves so do we want grams on top? and moles on the bottom, or do we need to flip this to do this problem? And so look, I'm going to have to cancel grams out, so that means I'm going to want grams down here and moles up here. And so for every one mole, there's 
36.46 grams. Okay. And then I just need a calculator. I don't even have my phone in the room with me right now, so i got to pull it up on my computer. Alright, and so we go 50 divided by 36.46. We get one point, ooh, sig fig time. How many sig figs do we get? Well, this is a measured value, but this is limiting us to three, so it's gonna be three, so 1.37. So we're gonna talk our way back through this, but this is the whole problem, solved. So, if I've gotta go from grams to moles, I need to flip Take my molar mass and flip it, because I need grams to cancel. I need grams divided by grams, and then moles on top to carry through to the end. That's what we're doing. Now we could do another direction. Maybe we start with moles. That's what we'll do next. So, you know, we could ask a question like, How many grams are in 3.0 moles of, I'm going to get mean here, magnesium chloride. <gasps> I didn't write the formula. How would you know what that is? Ah, oh, well. <clears throat> you got a metal and non-metal. It's ionic compound, right? You go magnesium, use your periodic table. You remember it's a 2 plus. Chloride is a minus. Do the diagonal. I never miss an opportunity to review something, right? You get MgCl2. Okay, so we got that done. Bam. Problem solved, right? We've solved all of our problems. Not quite. Alright, so what's the molar mass of MgCl2? We know we're going to need that. Might as well work it up now. Well, I've got one magnesium. Looks like that's 24.31 to me. 24.31 grams per mole. And I'm going to add to that two, because I've got two chlorines here. Two times the molar mass of chlorine, which is 35.45 grams per mole. Always good to write the units. Helps prevent mistakes later. So we're going to get that all totaled up. So we go 2 times 35.45 plus 24.31. get 95.21 grams per mole. Because my Windows calculator would never betray me. No, sir. Alright, so now are we done? We've done so much. We've taken these words. We've made symbols out of them. We've turned those symbols into numbers with convoluted units. What more could chemistry be about, right? Oh yeah, there's more of the problem after all. So, I've got 3.0 moles, and I need to know how many grams that is. So I've got 3.0 moles of MgCl2. Now do I write it as it is here? Do I just transfer it down, or do I need to flip it? Well, I need moles on the bottom to cancel with moles over here, so I leave it as it is. So, you know, it's the classic, is it 12 inches per foot, or is it 1 foot over 12 inches? You know, that type of thing. So either one is correct, it's just, is it correct for what we need to do? Okay, so now moles will cancel. And we go 3 times 95.21. We get 285.63, according to my calculator, but we only get two significant figures because of 3.0. So this is 290 grams per mole. I hope you guys enjoy hearing my dogs bark if you can. There must be something outside like, I don't know, a 7-Eleven cup or a wayward balloon. Alright, so 290 grams per mole. So we can go from moles to grams and we just use our molar mass as it is. So we use the trick of finding it. And hey, look at that. We even had to use the trick of finding the formula, so I really folded a lot in here. But that is the whole picture here. We can go from grams to mole. So, you know, if we're going like this one, actually, we'll start here. You know, moles times molar mass. 
is going to give us grams. And mass times 1 over molar mass, which means we just flip it upside down, is going to give us moles. Now you don't have to memorize that because you can just follow along with the units. Make sure they cancel. Well, what did I do here? I Why do I have grams for mole? Okay, just grams. In case you were wondering about that. Whew. End of the videos, right? You know, It's been a long section. I had to write, make three whole videos. And one of them was a whole five minutes long. So, 290 grams. I was so focused on the sig figs that I goofed on the units. Be better than me, you know? If you can, I highly encourage it. Alright, so. Uh, you know, there's just two things we can do. Grams to moles, moles to grams. Because those are the units we're working with. That's what this lets us do. And the reason we do this is just because in the real world we work with grams. But when it comes time to analyze the chemistry, we've got to work with moles. We've got to work with the number of particles. How many moles of substance did I make? What, you know, how many, you know, if it takes two of these and one of these to do a reaction, I need twice as much of this stuff. But they don't weigh the same. So it's not like I need two kilograms, one kilogram. I might need 20 kilograms and 45 kilograms. This thing might be really heavy. So mass is conserved, but, you know, all that stuff still. But the reaction is between particles, so they, and they make something new. Um, and we'll talk about this more when we get to chemical reactions much later in the class. But just kind of like, if you're wondering why do we do this, and if you're not wondering why we do this, nah, you know, whatever. Try not to wander off on YouTube too much. Okay, so, that's it for this section. So you should be comfortable with what a mole is. You should know how to find molar mass for, you know, anything at this point I can throw at you. And then you should be able to use that molar mass to convert between moles and grams of a substance, or vice versa. Grams to moles, moles to grams. Whichever way you got to go. And so this would be, you know, as difficult of a problem as I could imagine throwing at you. I mean, I can get a little trickier with, like, the number of moles or something, or, you know, grams or whatever. But I make you figure out the formula from a name, uh, find the molar mass... You know, it's not all one of something. you got to make sure you pay attention to your subscripts. So this is, you know, this is the height of the mountain for this class. In terms of this section. So, you know, overall the class is still ramping up. But this is, you know, we have reached a new crest. There's another one off in the horizon. So, um, I believe next we're doing organic chemistry. So, we're going to continue to build on this idea. Like, we had atoms, we had molecules, now we're going to do organic molecules, which are bigger. And we're just going to keep going from there. So, um, as always, if there's anything you're stuck on in this section, just let me know. There's a, you know, help forum, email, video office hours. Just let me know, and I am happy to be available for you. Otherwise, congratulations on totally getting it. That's cool, too. All right.